today on Be Something Wonderful, manifesting your wish fulfilled by mastering the law of opposites. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Some great sessions. And in one of the sessions, one of my clients asked, Tom, do I have to go through and experience the opposite of what I want? In other words, do I have to suffer and, and, and struggle and go through the opposite before I can experience or manifest my wish fulfilled? Guys, I want to talk about this today and more. We've talked about the law of polarity. We've talked about the law of opposites as a universal law, as necessary part of duality in the world of relativity. And because really, Everything is, is, is in fact created or experienced because of the law of polarity, because of the law of opposites, right? Because you have just the absolute God and without polarity, without the opposites, then there is no experience of that absolute. How do you experience that part of all that is or that part of the one without the idea of the opposite or polarity to move towards something or away from something. That's how form is taken. That's how manifestation happens. That's how that one power, that one source, that one substance manifests into form by moving, by moving, moving. And how, how is it movement happen? By polarity, by opposite. So let's talk about this today and more because it's not about not experiencing opposites, it's about mastering them, rising above them, not experiencing the extremes, right? It's the resistance and moving to the extremes that causes the experience of suffering. So remember, creation is finished, right? And, and it's not really about creating anything. It's about choosing what part of creation that you want to experience now. In other words, you're a fully evolved divine being. So what part of that evolution do you want to experience now? And that happens by movement within. That turns into movement without. And that movement within is, is, is invoked by, the, by that law of polarity or that law of opposites. So let's unpack this like we never have before. Remember, creation's finished. Infinite realities exist in the eternal now moment as potential. It's all potential, right? All versions of yourself and realities, infinite in number, are accessible, to, are accessible to you right now. You are a fully evolved being here to choose what part of your infinite evolution you would like to experience next. This is an inherent divine beingness from which you, from which you exist and in which you move and have your being. You have your being in this, right? That's why scripture says, for in him we live and we move and have our being. In that beingness, right, that is the first manifestation of the absolute, right? The absolute was, it was one without any polarity, without any duality, nothing. But then the first manifestation is this beingness. You might even call it the first polarity, God contemplating itself and moving within and movement can only happen when there's something to move to or move from, right? It's the law of polarity and opposites that is the relationship between the opposites that makes the living, moving, and being in him. That, that being is only possible by God moving within. Call it first cause, first movement, creating that substance from which all manifestations come right? No motion or movement would be possible because there would be nowhere to move to or move from. And that would make manifestation of form impossible. Do you see this? It, this manifestation, the first manifestation, call it the beingness of God, the divine mind. That's only possible if there's, a, if there's something to move to or move from. Right? This is called the first law of polarity. Right? The first, the no motion of movement would be possible because there would be nowhere to move to or move from. And that would make manifestation of form impossible. In other words, this polarity of opposites is what makes the experience of your evolution possible. It's what makes the experience of your, you, your life experience possible. That's powerful. So let's hit it. So... So here's the absolute, to be, all that is. 
just is. All that is, just is. It's the isness. It's the love. That never changes. That isness is always there. It's absolute. It's one divine presence. It's source. It's intelligence. It's the best thing to describe it as love. But then there's the first thought. There's God. There's a self-contemplation of God. This is the first creation. The absolute behind it never changes, right? It's movement upon itself. The, that's where the divine beingness is created. That's the substance from which it all comes, right? Everything it comes from that substance. You, me, everything, right? In him, we live, we move, and have our being. That's the first, call that the first manifestation, the first, the first movement, right? God contemplating himself. And how can God contemplate himself? That's the first thought or the movement of that intelligence, right? That's God consciousness. But if it's consciousness, God consciousness, it's, it's alive with substance. It has to be conscious of something. What is it conscious of? That divine substance, that aliveness. The primal polarity is formed as God consciousness is conscious of its own living substance. That is the source of polarity, right? There's only one source, right? And you experience on, on, on the level of, of being, a, being an outlet, or a, or a creative center of God, right? The primal polarity is formed as God consciousness is conscious of its own living substance. Consciousness to, to exist at all, as, as Thomas Trowood says, has to be conscious of something. What's it conscious of? That living substance that scripture refers to as him. In him, we live, we move, and have our being right? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Remember in scripture when Jesus was asking his disciples, who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God, the son of that living beingness, that divine beingness, right? That's the substance of which we are made, right? That's the substance where we come. That's the consciousness. So let's hit this a little bit more. There is something which comes before that polarity. This is Thomas Troward. There is something which comes before that polarity that we just talked about, which gives rise to evolution. And that this something is original movement of spirit within itself, of which we can best get an idea by calling it self-contemplation. So before that polarity is even created, there's the movement within God. That's first movement, first cause. It doesn't require, quote, polarity because it's the one moving within. But then from that one, that beingness is created, that substance, hence the idea of the polarity, right? Because now that substance moves. So like all that is, God, you give rise to polarity that enables you to experience your manifested desires and fulfillment of your wishes as a center of God consciousness in that creative, one creative center. Like God, you, the polarity is necessary so you can feel, so you can experience your manifestation, so you can move to your wish fulfilled, so you can move within, so you can imagine it, your wish fulfilled, right? Remember, when you declare who you are now, when you assume that new version of yourself, when you assume that new reality, you are invoking the law of polarity, the law of opposites, because you're moving. But as opposed to looking at the opposites, as looking at it as, oh, it didn't work, or I'm not in my wish fulfilled, or I'm not getting what I want, look at it as proof that you have moved. Look at it as, a, look at it as an opportunity to, to deepen your identity with the new version of yourself, your identity with the new reality. That's what we're talking about. Remember, there's something which comes before that polarity which gives rise to evolution right, before the first polarity, right, that this something is original movement of spirit within itself, which can best be, get it, which can best get an idea by calling it self-contemplation. It's God moving upon itself that creates that beingness, that polarity of substance from which we all create, right? So that's powerful. If, if we want to change the manifestation we must change the polarity. And to change the polarity, we must get back to the self-contemplation of spirit. This is Thomas Troward again, right? Let me see if I can move that down a little bit more. There we go. If we want to change the manifestation, we must change the polarity. And to change the polarity, we must get back to self-contemplation of spirit. That's big, 
right? If you want to change manifestation, if you want something different, you've got to change the polarity of your own beingness. You've got to move to what you want. That does invoke opposites, but as you, you can, but again, it, the only way that, that, that you can get caught up in that is to start focusing on the opposite of what you want, to start reacting to it, right? To start thinking something went wrong, right? The opposites are going to exist. It, it, it means getting back to and imagining your desired end. Remember, the opposites will always be there. You'll always be moving with that polarity, but you transcend it by spiraling upward, by moving with it, by moving towards your desires as you frequently return to your desired end, right? If we want to change the manifestation, we must change the polarity. And to change the polarity, we must get back to self-contemplation of spirit. What does that mean for you as an individualized consciousness of God or center of God? That means contemplating yourself as a, as a center of that one, right? On the level of your experience, it means contemplating your rightful place within the divine mind in moving your focus to imagine end and wish fulfilled, right? Neville says creation's finished, meaning first cause is finished. All realities exist. But how do you experience it then? How do you create within that one creation? How you create is, is through that polarity, through moving, imagining your wish fulfilled, for moving within that will move you without, right? By embracing and transcending polarity, right? You master the relative first cause, right? You master it because you become now a relative first cause, right? God is first cause of creation's finish, but now your relative first cause, meaning you're going to experience that one, what part of that one creation, what part of that one evolution, because you're a fully evolved being that you want to experience now by choosing what part of creation you desire to experience now. That's manifesting your wish fulfilled by mastering, the law of opposites. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. We also have a Facebook group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. You can join that group. It's totally open, but it's also private. So meaning, meaning it's open for you to join, but then it's private among the members, among the, those who have joined. So you can share insight and guidance and also give insight and guidance. Or just visit us anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com for all that information and more. With great love, with great light and infinite gratitude creators, see you soon.